Hello, I'm up in Scotland again. This will probably be my last ride for a while up here as I've got to get back to work. Playtime is over. So today I'm going to head up into the Highlands and uh, hopefully show you one of my favourite roads ever. Chat a little bit about the meteor um, and well, why I think it's probably my favourite bike ever. Hopefully see some nice scenery and generally chat some shit. That's the plan. Just riding along the side of Gairlock with Helmsborough is over the water there. That's a lovely little town. really like Helmsborough. As you can see by the uh, saturated roads, the weather over the last few days has been pretty damn horrendous to be honest. All that's done is rain and then rain some more. It's been quite depressing actually, this is meant to be the bloomin' summer. It has been warm but it's also been wet. Anyway, no one likes a whinger so I'm going to stop whinging. Truth is, in Scotland, if you wanted to spend your life avoiding uh, riding because of the weather, you'd never use your motorbike. It would stay in the garage. Now the bikes uh, run in. I've literally just run it in, and it just feels so much better now. The engine feels a lot freer. It revs better. It's just a much more enjoyable experience. I'm ready to unleash the power of the meteor. Just heading through Arakor now, where um, the scenery starts to get uh, very, very interesting. I think they call it the Arakor Alps. Sort of when you get into this area, you're starting to get into the, the mountain ranges. And it's got to be said, it's pretty beautiful. So why do I think the Royal Anfield Meteor 350 is potentially one of the best bikes I've ever owned? First of all, I love its looks. I remember when I first sat on it, you could easily be mistakenly thinking you'd been thrown back into the 1950s. It looks very retro with a modern twist to it. Really suits what I like in a bike anyway. It's funny how things work out, because the only reason I really bought the Meteor in the first place because it was so damn cheap. I mean, I really preferred the Royal Enfield Classic and the Hunter even. But when I first seen the Meteor, especially in the green, it just blew me away. I just was so, so better than what the pictures portrayed. That mountain in the middle there is called the Cobbler. Apparently it's meant to look like a cobbler or shoemaker bending down, attending to people's shoes. Don't get it myself like, but there you go. Must be a Scottish thing. And I've just hit exactly 1,200 miles. All run in and raring to go. I uh, bought that little Nessie toy yesterday for the bike and attached it to the handlebars. I kind of thought about lying about it and just saying it was my granddaughter's. But A, I haven't got a granddaughter. And B, it would be an outright lie. It was just me being, well, a bit pathetic really. It's my little Scottish mascot. So don't judge me too harshly. Just going to have a little wander down here and admire Arakar from across the lock. Have myself a coffee and a, a little bit sit. Enjoy the serenity for a while. Yeah, this is Lock Long. I guess it's called Lock Long because it's a bit long. Very original, whoever named that. A few people have asked me in the comments why I don't really put myself on camera very much. I mean, I've got absolutely no problem going in front of a camera. But when you look like this, a uh, middle-aged, slightly overweight, big-nosed gimp, I don't really want to subject people to it, to be honest. If I looked like Brad Pitt, I'd be on all the time, believe me. But I'm not, so I won't. I um, spend so much time in Scotland now, I'm even reading Billy Connolly books. I'm just paraphrasing some of uh, Billy's profound wisdom. Do what makes you happy. Be what makes you happy. And probably be favourite of all, seek the company of people who 
when left alone in a room was a tea cosy, will always try it on. That is so true. I'm not really hanging about here, but there's one of the local lunatics doing some stupid speed. No doubt I'll catch him up at some point anyway. And the second thing I love about the Meteor is its comfort. The standard seat is well up to the job. I've been on the bike probably about an hour and a half uh, so far today and no issues. My butt is absolutely fine, no pain, no discomfort. Be more than happy to do a lot more than I've done so far. And with the footrest sort of slightly forward, uh, like a cruiser type bike, it's the first time I've really uh, used a bike like this, but it's a super comfortable. Um, really enjoying the riding position here, just like there's no fatigue, it's very relaxed, it's just a great place to be. I did have a few initial reservations about the, you know, the, the toe heel uh, shifting mechanism I've got on here. And I know you can't change it if you really wanted to, but after, after you know, even just a few miles on it, I kind of got used to it, and it's second nature now, and I actually quite like it. So I'm not going to change it. It's just going to keep it as it was, really. The rain's coming down a little bit heavy now, so I've got to keep rubbing the camera, so excuse my grubby little fingers on the screen. And surprise, surprise, I've caught up the local nutter who went speeding past me just ten minutes ago. Reminds me of the story of the tortoise and the hare. I am the tortoise and I will catch you up. The only addition I've made to the bike since I bought it was adding the bare screen. And it definitely has helped. I mean, I personally prefer to ride with my visor open most of the time which is my personal choice and this definitely helps uh, to allow me to do that and it will take most of the buffeting away so it's probably yeah I would probably say it's uh, been a worthwhile uh, investment I think this is um, called Chilean rhubarb it's huge it's like being in a scene from Jurassic Park Yes, yeah, so I'll have another stop. Um, nature called. Nothing to do with the copious amounts of coffee I drink on my trips. All part of the adventure. That's what I say anyway. So just pulling onto one of my favourite roads, which is the A815. It's just outside of Kendal. I don't know if I'm saying Ken Dao right, but that's how I pronounce it anyway. It's just one of them little roads that you find, uh, purely by chance to be honest. I think I originally took a wrong turning somewhere and ended up on here. And it's absolutely magnificent, it really is. It's certainly not a road for any would-be speed demons, that's for sure. It's just best to take your time, chill out, and enjoy the magnificent scenery. I've rode this uh, road several times now and I think, if memory serves me right, I've yet to come across a single car, which has got to be good. One thing that pleasantly surprised me about the Meteor was its build quality. Um, I've been massively impressed with it, to be perfectly honest. The fit and finish is all good. It just feels a well put together machine. Well, nothing's dropped off so far anyway. This is the first Royal Enfield I've ever owned. Most of my other bikes have either been Japanese or German, as in BMWs. Um, and I've got to say the fit and finish on this bike is just as good as its Japanese and German counterparts. It really is. I really wasn't expecting that, to be honest, because obviously, you know, it's probably classed as a budget bike. And I paid, you know, I paid less for this bike than I did for my blinking e-bike. Uh, that's how cheap it was. So my expectations weren't really that high when it comes to its build quality, but I was wrong. It really is as good as anything else I've owned. 
it's probably too early for me to comment in terms of reliability of, about the bike. I mean, I've only owned it, what, just, uh, just over four months. But in the four months I've had it, I've had zero problems. And going off what I've said about the build quality of the bike, there's nothing about it would suggest to me anyway that it's going to be unreliable in any way. So I am confident I'm going to have hopefully years and years of uh, use out of the bike. I'm not quite sure what's going on to my right there. A load of overturned trees by the looks of it. I guess the acid test will be how the bike survives a miserable Scottish winter. I mean, I've always used my bikes all year round anyway, so there's going to be no exception with this one. So only time will tell on that, I guess. I get a real sense of adventure and solitude up here. Um, I'd definitely recommend if you're ever up this way and get the chance to, to ride this road. Uh, I don't think you'd be disappointed. It really is uh, something else, to be honest. I've just stopped here. I noticed a little truck going off the road leading to God knows where. So I thought I'd uh, give it a go and see where I end up. And this leads me on to what else I love about this bike, and that is its lightweight and its maneuverability. I'm not sure if somebody's dumped all that stuff there, or maybe it's the, the forest worker's equipment. Not sure, but if it is somebody who's fly-tipped, I hope they have a horrible life. I despise people who do that. I really do. Obviously, I know the Meteor is certainly not an off-road bike uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but because it's so easy to ride, I will take it pretty much anywhere, to be honest now. The GoPros don't normally really show how sort of gravelly and steep this road is, but take my word for it, it is. Um, the footage doesn't portray that very well, unfortunately, but you'll just have to take my word for it. And that's what I love about the Meteor. I mean, it could be applied to any small bike, I guess, but, you know, you're riding along, you find a little semi-off-road route, and you think, bugger it, I'm just gonna go down there and see where it leads me to. My last uh, motorbike was a BMW RT1250 and if I'm being honest there's no way I would have took it down this road. Absolutely no chance. I mean better riders than me may well have uh, been able to achieve that uh, but I would have just been too nervous about dropping the blowing thing. You know it's a, it was a 20 gram bike. I mean obviously I don't want to drop the Meteor but if I drop this one, drop me three gram bike, so it's a bit of a difference. I just find it so liberating that the bike gives me the confidence to to go anywhere, to do stuff like this. And, you know, rather than being nervous about it, just enjoying the experience, discovering new places. And surely that's the whole essence of owning a motorbike. I guess when you're out sort of solo in remote places I mean like I say if I did drop the spike it would be no hassle to pick it up on my own but if I had like the old RT1250 or one of the big adventure bikes I mean they're a bit of a nightmare to, to pick up on your own I mean you can't do it but you know you've got gravelly off camber roads like this um, it would be a bit precarious to say the least I guess what I'm trying to say is a bike like the Meteor, it enables me, it enables me as a, an average rider to tackle terrain like this and not really think too much about it. I think life's all about, you know, having memories. I mean, I'll go home today and I'll, I don't know, be sitting at home, having a cup of tea, thinking about the beautiful things I've seen, the routes I've done. But if I'd been on my, uh, I mean BMW, I mean I'm not, it sounds like I'm knocking BMWs, I'm not at all, the, the RT is a fantastic bike for what it is, but like I said I probably wouldn't have done this route, and 
I would have been left with a memory tonight thinking, you know, what if? I wonder what was down that road. But now I know. And this bike, it's given me the ability to discover, you know, areas like this. You know, it's just so quiet and beautiful. I know it sounds a little bit corny, but you are at one with nature. You know, it's totally desolate up here. There's nobody about, nothing about really. The only things I've seen is a, a few birds, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I guess it's just great to be out here on my own, you know, getting away from the, the mad, overcrowded world that we live in. Another big attraction with the meteor, well, most of the Royal Enfields, um, for that matter, is their value for money. And there's absolutely no arguing that Royal Enfields are pumping out bikes of good quality now at really affordable prices. Affordable for the masses, basically. Another thought that's just come into my head about the Royal Enfields. Um, I mean, I'm not the most sociable person and I see motorcycling as basically an extension of a solo type lifestyle. I like the independence it gives me and the solitude I seek sometimes. But I can almost guarantee if I stop on the bike somewhere, I don't know, at a shop or getting some petrol, almost without fail you will have someone come up, they'll spot the Royal Enfield barge and they'll come up and want to know about the bike and they are generally interested. And it's quite a nice thing. I don't ever recall any of the bikes I've had in the past where people have approached me and wanted to have a chat about the bike and are, are really interested. Never. Oh well, that was a nice little detour. A little off-road expedition. And I never fell off. Hey! And like I said earlier, if I'd been on some big monster bike, I would have never discovered this tranquil little area. Yeah, so I'm just going to have a little sit down here I think and watch the world go by for half an hour you know it's just just great it's just just what can I say really beautiful scenery lovely little motorbike to discover it all on what is there not to like just me and my bike happy days indeed so back on the main road now I'm just going to pull in here because I've passed this little spot so many times and there's something here, I'm not really sure what it is. But damn it, I'm going to have a little look, see what's going on. Nice little bench there, good excuse for a sit down, another coffee and contemplate a little bit more on life. Today's just getting better by the minute. Moses as well. Whoever he was, a nice pretty little spot, and a well. I assume this is um, drinkable, I'm sure it is. So what else can I say about the bike? Well, from a maintenance side, because it's a relatively uh, simple engine, you can do a lot of the tasks yourself. Um, even somebody like myself with very basic mechanical knowledge um, can perform quite a lot of things. There's not a whole lot of plastic and stuff like that to get out, get off rather. Um, so it's quite a, an easily accessible bike to, to perform your, your maintenance on, which is a, a massive plus point in my book. A fellow biker, he's spotted my secret road. How dare they? Any negatives about the bike? Not from my perspective, not at all. I mean, I know some people criticise it in some quarters about the engine performance or rather lack of it, but I don't really get that to be honest. I mean, it's a 350cc air cooled engine producing 20 brake horsepower. And for the roads I use it on, it's more than adequate. 
it's you know it really is and i'll have more than enough fun yeah if you were going to sit be sitting on i don't know motorways all day long it wouldn't be the best bike for that but no um i'm not having it nothing wrong with the engine performance in my view the billy Connolly book i showed a little bit earlier is called windswept and interesting well the wind is picking up so i'm certainly going to be windswept on my way home heavy rain and roadworks just what we need a little pretty waterfall well it's not really a waterfall is it but sort of a waterfall I guess the last thing I can say about the bike, I mean just hypothetically if it blew up or somebody stole it, would I replace it with the same model? I would, absolutely, like a shot.